quite literally one of the worst trading days in the stock market since June of 2020. Yes, June of 2020. The NASDAQ finished the day down over 5%, which was, again, steeper than any day since June of 2020. And we had a gut check before a push to new highs into the end of that year in 2020. Now, this is kind of a crazy day in the stock market. We want to unpack this in today's video and also talk about what we need to watch going forward as there are now going to be some significant changes ahead of this recent CPI report. We'll cover that in just one second as well. Today was a day where every stock in the NASDAQ 100 was down. And this does not happen many times in history. And we have some data to talk about what potentially or what we've seen in the past after we have a day where every stock in the NASDAQ 100 declines. Every single one was down, okay? So again, why this happened, there was a catalyst to get us there. This morning, we had CPI data for August that came in up 0.1% for the month and up 8.3% year over year, despite an expectation that was supposed to be around 8.1% year over year. Now, this does still come in lower than last month, which is a notable uh, at least point to make. Um, it's not like we hit a new high on the CPI, similar to what we had in terms of the CPI reaction in June, where we saw a massive pullback in the stock market after a CPI reading that was ultimately higher than way higher than expected and hit some new highs. Uh, however, since then, we've had two CPIs that have come down. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, with a lot of these stocks taking massive hits, talking about Apple down almost 6%, we're talking Microsoft down 5.5%, Google down 6 almost percent, Amazon down over 7%, Meta down nearly 10%, NVIDIA down nearly 10% as well. These are some massive, massive moves down in just one day. Just one day for some of these stocks. But with this, now the speculation is that the Fed may have to continue to raise rates more aggressively and longer than anticipated to continue to get inflation down. But again, make sure we understand that the CPI reading or the CPI numbers are again lagging indicators as the Fed, what they do today in terms of raising rates or what they're going to do next week in terms of raising rates is not going to necessarily bring inflation down next month. Okay, it will take months. There's a lag behind what their policy right now ultimately does to these CPI numbers going forward, okay? But it seems like so far this year, ever since they started raising rates, it just really hasn't made a huge impact, right? It really comes down to oil and gas that have made some pretty big declines that have really helped these numbers. And if they didn't, and it would still be pretty, pretty hot on that CPI. So with this said, now we're looking as we're filming this video at roughly a 33% chance of a 100 basis point hike from the Fed next week on September 21st. 67% chance of a 75 basis point hike. That's where the consensus has kind of been. As of late, if these numbers came in, let's say in the high sevens, we'd probably be looking at a 50 versus a 75 instead of a 75 versus 100 basis point hike from the Fed. So again, this is coming out Wednesday of next week, little after lunchtime, uh, Eastern time. Uh, is when we're going to get that decision from Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve. Now, I'm not really expecting too much new information there. It will be probably the same narrative of we need to get inflation down. It is much too high, yada, yada, yada. Yes, we know. Okay, let's dive into things. So here is a look at the uh, QQQ, Invesco QQQ, the Qs as we like to call them. And uh, what we're going to look at first is how bad or how bad was it at the end of the day? So despite today's massive dump, the really the big reason or why this is a much bigger move or a very, very large move or why people are freaking out because of this move is really because we ended up closing up at the high of the day yesterday. Uh, and so we really had a lot of room to come down. We closed up here on, on the queues around 310, 311 almost uh, yesterday. And we finished down here around 3 or 293.70. So it's a pretty big move to the downside, right? However, uh, still not lower than the lows we made last week on the queues, which are down to around 291. So still need to drop below 291 to see a lower, at least a lower low compared to last week. Wouldn't be surprised if that does occur this week, but really we're not that far off. Okay. So like within a couple bucks could happen pretty easily, um, you know, gap down or just a kind of a, a quick little flush out, you know, one day to make a new low there. 
The key will be, do we hold it or do we confirm below and do we drop the floor out further? That's the key. That's the key. So let's look over at the S&P. Let's pull up SPX. Take a peek at this. So here's SPX, okay, the S&P 500 index. And uh, here's your downtrend, pretty clear. We do have an uptrend. Let me get rid of this volume. Uh, a higher volume day today, not really surprised. But let me get rid of that volume. And let's show you, um, you know, a better picture. Yeah, a little cleaner look at the chart here on SPX. What we're going to see is that we are right at that trend line. So, you know, in, in terms of from a technical perspective, you know, if you were someone who was buying, you know, the S&P or, you know, calls or whatever at the close, from a technical perspective, it makes sense. I, I can't necessarily, you know, say, oh, yeah, it was a terrible idea. No, no, like it makes sense from a technical perspective. However, we could easily drop below this tomorrow. And if we did, you know, then that would be the stop. So a risk reward from a risk reward perspective, as long as you respect that trend line as your stop, it's not bad. Now, the question is that we could easily drop below that trend line, hold 390, bounce, or drop below that, go lower, okay? Now, in targets to the downside, if we do crack this trend, okay, key spot, if we do crack this trend this week or next week, targets to the downside, where will that be? Well, I think a very realistic spot could be down into here. This would be the gap fill uh, from a couple of months back, back into July, mid-July, gapped up overnight and then had that massive run up to that 200 moving average here on the S&P. So that would be the spot to watch. Uh, that's down to around, looks like 3,800, just below 3,800 on the S on SPX, on the S&P 500 index, around 380 on SPY, 379 or so uh, is the spot, okay? Uh, this also sets up, and, and key here to note is this, we have established so far, maybe, maybe we do make a little bit of a lower push here, but so far we have established a higher low, okay? On the way down, right? Each of these lows have just been lower lows. Now we've really truly established looks like a higher low right here. And so does this higher low need to necessarily be right here? Could it come down here? Yes, it could, okay? But until this higher low, right, is proven and is proven to be you know no longer a higher low, right? We push lower. That is something we need to pay attention to in the stock market. Like you can't just sit here and blindly say to yourself, oh, we must go to new lows because the economy is terrible and the Fed's raising more rates and all this. Again, a lot has been discounted and a lot has been acted upon. That's the difference. I mean, there's one thing to discount and then there's one thing to act. And we've been seeing sentiment, right, that has been at crazy low levels. We've been seeing the put call ratios pushing back up. And I would expect the put call ratio based on what we're seeing right now it's still pretty high, up over 0.9. Again, the average is like 0.7. Um, I expect this is a five-day average, so give it you know another day or two to really kind of take into account what we just saw today in the markets. I would expect this is going to come up a decent amount unless we just rip right back up tomorrow or the next day, which is possible, but you know somewhat unlikely if it happens you know that fast. We shall see. So expect that put call ratio to be high, which again means sentiment is pretty bad in terms of where traders are. They are buying puts. They are shorting the S&P. Like this is what's been happening, right? So yesterday going into the CPI, I think that there was a little bit of, you know, a little optimism. People were optimistic that the CPI might actually be better than expected and we might go higher. Guess what? Expectations were not met. They weren't completely destroyed. It wasn't like we completely had a horrible year higher than last month. No, no, no. CPI still came down compared to last month for year over year number, the headline number. However, under the surface, all items, less food and energy. If you take a look at this, here's a little chart. All items, less food and energy did perk up flatline for the past few months. And it perked up. That is not good. That is not good. And that is ultimately why here we are down five and a half percent on the Nasdaq. Now getting to the point of the video, okay? What happens when every single stock in the Nasdaq 100 is down on a given day? Well, it does not happen often, okay? Let's see what history tells us. Now, again, these are just, you know, historical data numbers. You know, it is nothing that necessarily means we must go up or down in the future, but let's go with it. So, this is from Sentiment Trader on Twitter, um, and let's take a look. So over the past 25 years, okay, what have we seen? There has been 13 times where every stock or every member of the NASDAQ 100 is down on a given day, okay? The last time it happened prior to today, when we're filming this video, the 13th of September 2022, was the 12th of March 2020. 
the pandemic you know, crash. And actually, surprisingly, only happened one day uh, during that pullback, which is kind of crazy. It was only one day. So what have we seen historically? Obviously, the pandemic, we've seen some, some bounce backs. But what I think is insane is that out of all of these 13 times, this has happened over the past 25 years, okay, 12 months later, every single time the market has been higher, 12 months later every single time, okay? This even includes some events from 2008, 2009, 2011, 2012, 2018, 19. If we take a look at some of the charts or some of the stats, the data is increasingly bullish the longer you go out. So week to week, you know, who cares? First month or two, not as notable, but as you move out to three to six to 12 months, the percentages and the the bullish potential here uh, just continues to stack up in the bull's favor. So 77% of the time, three months later, we've been up. Six months later, 85% of the time we've been up. And then 12 months later, every single time we've been up. So what's the average gain? 12 months later, 26%. Six months later, 15%. Three months later, 10%. Okay. Just something to note, just something to keep in the back of your head. Well, again, it's, and it's one of those things too, that Obviously, unless we really unravel and there are some unexpected things that start to really pile up in the future, right? Unless that was to be the case, when most people get super bearish and just start selling everything and the markets are, are dumping, it tends to be a decent time to buy, as we all you know, generally know, outside of a few select occasions going back throughout you know history in the stock market. So this is quite interesting. Let us know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. If you have any other insight, other awesome ideas, let us know in the comments like always. Uh, very curious to everyone how everyone is feeling, especially after a day like this. But these are the numbers. Sometimes it's nice to just kind of look at the stats and just kind of ground yourself and say, hey, you know what? At the end of the day, you know, the S&P isn't making new lows. We are still technically on this, you know, uptrend and it hasn't hit new lows yet. And we've been through a ton. Like we, like we always say, we've been through a ton this year. At the end of the day, is this super, super surprising? Eh, it's somewhat surprising, but hey, we've seen crazier things and, and we've we've been under more pain, especially, you know, throughout the first six to eight months of this year, really, uh, so far. So let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. We'll leave some links and resources down below, as well as a webinar covering some trading signals to add to your arsenal for free. Check that out. This platform right here is TradingView. You can sign up for a free 30-day trial as well with the link in the video description box. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Thumbs up button, consider subscribing, and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.